In 1912, Rugby League didn't exist in Toowoomba. In 1925, the Toowoomba Clydesdales were world champions. What happened in those 13 years? How did a small rural town produce a representative team that defeated the best of the Rugby League world? We celebrate the Toowoomba Rugby League's 100th anniversary in 2019, but that's not where the story started. Like many revolutions, it started with a fight. The beginning of Rugby League in Toowoomba is really the story of two disputes, one in 1906 and one in 1912. In the late 1800s, Rugby Union had made its way from Britain to Sydney, then Brisbane, and then up the range to Toowoomba. The breakaway competition, Rugby League, was also spreading, but wouldn't arrive in Sydney until 1908 and Brisbane the year after. So the Toowoomba Rugby League's genesis can be said to have begun at the old Toowoomba showgrounds on May 27, 1906, as the Rangers club took on boomerangs in a rough and tough game of rugby union. Before the match, some members of the media complained that the Rangers were playing the game too aggressively. One member of the Rangers, John Wilson, had been singled out for special attention from spectators. The Toowoomba Chronicle wrote that the Rangers players were savoury more of brutality rather than mere roughness. On the other hand, the Darling Downs Gazette was of the opinion that the criticism of the Rangers club was quite unfair and unwarranted. It should be noted that the Tolmy family, who ran the Gazette newspaper, were affiliated with the club. In fact, Roderick Tolmy wrote for the paper while also playing for the Rangers. While the newspapers ran competing stories regarding the Rangers' conduct, it can be accepted that the game these men played was brutal and sometimes vicious. Now on this May afternoon, John Wilson, whose behaviour had been attacked in the press, allegedly made an offensive gesture to the crowd who had been heckling his performance. We don't know what they said, but we have an approximation of what Wilson did. Wilson placed his fingers to his nose to the patrons of the stand, who had voiced the disapproval of a feature of his play. The Toowoomba Chronicle was most upset by Wilson's actions. For endeavouring to commit a daring illegality in front of the grandstand, the occupants of the pavilion readily rebuked him for his action, but their reprimand fell on deaf ears and he deliberately turned round to the occupants on two occasions and made signs grossly repugnant to the most hardened rugby con. It is only dragging Toowoomba football into the mire of disrepute, and ye gods, is it not sunk far enough into the slough already? To tolerate such conduct is not fair to the gentlemen players of Toowoomba, all of whom appreciate no pastime like rugby. Perhaps unsurprisingly, the Darling Downs Gazette had a very different view. Wilson was again the subject of much despicable criticism at the hands of a section of the public. He, in his anger no doubt, so far forgot himself as to commit a breach of etiquette. As far as this incident is concerned, no one will support him, as no person, no matter in what position in life, is to be commended for committing a breach of good manners. Toowoomba Chronicle has led the campaign against the Rangers players and particularly Wilson. One view would be that, that they stirred up the trouble. One of the things that the Gazette did point out was that when uh, Wilson and, and others from the Rangers were playing for Toowoomba, People from the other clubs are very supportive of their, their style of play, so there's a bit of hip hypocrisy pointed out there. Rangers player Wilson was called upon to apologise for his behaviour during the Boomerangs match. Wilson believed that he had been treated unfairly and that he had not been given the opportunity to defend himself. He refused to apologise and was subsequently given a life suspension. This incensed the members of the Rangers club. On May 31, approximately 150 Rangers players and supporters met at the White Horse Hotel and passed a resolution supporting Wilson. They also agreed to send a letter to the Chronicle 
condemning their report and requesting that future stories be written in an impartial manner in keeping with ordinary British fair play. Finally, the Rangers decided to forfeit all future matches until the dispute was settled. In response, the Toowoomba Rugby Union resolved that the Rangers club be disqualified. The club and the union had reached a situation where their relationship was untenable. The Rangers stayed firm. It wasn't until 1911 when the club was reinstated to the competition. The exact details of their return are not clear. Perhaps the union needed more players? Maybe the combatants wanted hostilities to end? Perhaps it was a joyous return, but maybe there was still something else bubbling away just under the surface. In 1912, the Rangers and the Toowoomba Rugby Union found themselves at loggerheads once again. And this time the Rangers had a clear alternative. The new rugby league had made a brief debut appearance in Toowoomba in 1908 when a touring Maori side played Queensland. By 1912, rugby league was played in Brisbane, Sydney and many parts of Australia, but it hadn't yet made its way to the Garden City. And while rugby league would have come to Toowoomba in some capacity eventually, its arrival was heralded by most unfortunate events. A brawl. A brawl on September 21, 1912, during the final match of the Toowoomba Rugby Union competition. The past Grammars Club were up against the reigning Premiers, Rangers, and by the end of the afternoon, the TRU surely regretted reinstating the Rangers in 1911. Now we can't be sure why the two teams were so hostile to one another. They had played four times already that year with two wins apiece. They were thus playing for overall bragging rights and, perhaps ironically, for the ambulance shield. Whatever the reason, it seems the fight started early. Players, forgetting they were on a football ground and not in a boxing arena, resorted to unfortunate tactics which were continued as the game progressed. The longer the game lasted, the rougher it became, and eventually it wound up with no fewer than four players being spread out in the field at the one time. The Gazette reported, the fighting intensified in the second half until it was an all-in brawl. Some spectators crowded onto the field, and according to the Gazette, there was every appearance of serious trouble. The melee was so intense that the game was abandoned by the referee, Mr Lane but not before several players received nasty injuries. The Chronicle also recounted bloody scenes. Two of the Grammar Fords were sent to the ground like Skittles. The first one was Dee Williams, who received three vicious smacks on the right cheek and he fell to the ground. He was followed by another of his clubmates, A. Ullman, who was the recipient of a beautiful uppercut, which found the point and he fell to the ground and lay motionless. Soon the crowd rushed onto the ground, and the arena was filled with a surging mob. They surrounded the two prostrate forms on the ground, while the ambulance bearers, police and medical men attended to the injured. Blood flowed freely, and there were few of the whole 30 who did not receive a present at one time or another. Some, however, showed a clean pair of heels when the crisis came and escaped. It was reported widely. It was reported in newspapers uh, all across Australia. Uh, as far as Western Australia, South Australia. Uh, so it must have got out on the wire services and it sounded like a good story. But yeah, widely reported, so Toowoomba was in the news. The widespread reporting of such violence was no doubt damaging to the sport's reputation. Someone would need to be held to account. And it was clear that the TRU laid the blame. A hearing was called on September 28, one week after the match. 20 witnesses appeared as the TRU met for several hours. The decisions of the ruling body were to have ramifications for players, for clubs and both rugby codes. Firstly, the abandoned game was awarded to past grammars on the basis that they were leading when the fighting broke out. Secondly, and more sensationally, suspensions were handed out to eight players. Sam Parker and Charlie Abbott from Rangers were suspended for life. Patrick Harney, Ralph Marler from Rangers and Fred Ullman from Grammars were given two year suspensions. While Augie Ullman and Dave Horridum from Grammar and Sek Marler from Rangers were put out for a year. The Rangers had received almost all the blame, while past Grammars were declared the victors. 
The Chronicle was pleased with the result. The union, or rather the executive, are to be complimented on the firm hand in severely punishing those players who grossly violated the rules of the game and sought to make a pugilistic ring out of a football arena around which many ladies were congregated. Well, I think it was a pretty unsavory incident. I think um, from all reports, uh, a lot of violence, uh, well outside of the accepted norms of any, of any game. So I think the Toowoomba Rugby Union didn't have any choice but to take some harsh actions. And uh, now we can debate whether a life suspension is, is applicable or a two year or one year, or uh, we might want to compare it to the, you know, today's standards, which I, am, which I think would have been lengthy suspensions, but certainly I don't think they would have come down for a life suspension for any, any of the events. But that's not, that's not diminishing in any way the severity of the incident and I think that the, the rugby union had no choice but to act. However, the TRU's decisions were not received well among members of the Rangers club. On October 8, the Rangers met to consider their future. They were so incensed, the club made the decision to secede from the rugby union and take up the rival rugby league. At a meeting of the Rangers club last evening, at which between 35 and 40 persons were present, it was unanimously decided that the club should accept the offer of the Ipswich League Union and play a match at Ipswich on Saturday. Was some of the Rangers' resentment still left over from 1906? Back then, there was no alternative, and the Rangers had to sit the game out. But in 1912, with Rugby League now a viable option, the Rangers gladly took it up. On October 12, a rugby league team representing Toowoomba played for the very first time. The side, who had almost certainly never played under league rules before, put in a valiant performance and a 27-18 loss to Ipswich Starlight's team. The beginning wasn't pretty and much blood was shed, but in the most calamitous circumstances, the Toowoomba Rugby League was born. The back line defence of New Zealand, I think, to women. Now, trouble with it. Fees are thrown it out to McGrath. McGrath with the ball. McGrath still running with the ball. Covered again there by 5-8 airborne. Down he goes. It was Douglas who went in and finished the tackle. Back the pass comes now to Hancock. Hancock decides to go by himself. Beats one, gets the pass back inside to his support. And to over. Here he goes. He's kicking for the wing in Clevens, and that's got a bad one. He's got it. And that is a good try, and that was always on. If they can get out to the left half score, Lawson tries to dummy, tries to come right that side. Lawson's in. Sean Lawson scores. He's short of the 40 on this grandstand side. So it goes to Sullivan. Gets it on to Ty Gardner. Ty Gardner gets it on to Taylor on the town with a bit of space. He's got some point. Puts it in the right. That is a great try to Benny Sullivan. That is the try of the year on Remy. Oh, I'm going to get his plate on Taylor. I'm going to get the town. The top of the ball set up by Ty Gardner. 